I turned to look at Miss Mikun, but he just grinned and gave me the finger. <laughs> McDonald's hamburgers! <laughs> McDonald! And that was why I decided not to reply to Yua's email. No! How's it going, everybody? Hudlamut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And, uh, last time... <laughs> Last time, uh, I don't want to talk about last time, bro. Last time we learned not to ever press the the green button, ever, or else we go we go into delusion world, which usually leads to perv world. That's what we found out. I don't know if that's gonna be the way through the whole entire game, but I don't ever want to touch that button again. <laughs> I don't want to touch that button again. Uh, I don't know if that actually has any other function to the game other than doing what it did last episode. But since that's all the information I have to go off of, I'm not touching it. But you know what's gonna happen? Curiosity's gonna get the best of me, and I'm gonna have to touch it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to see in a crucial moment. It's gonna be like someone's about ready to get stabbed or something, and it's gonna be like a girl. She's about ready to stab someone, and and it'll be like, oh no, what should I do? And then if I click the green button, suddenly he'll have a delusion like, oh man, I'm actually super into Yandere, and he'll like see her in a swimsuit again or something. Freaking. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, what actually happened last time was um. Yua helped us back to our room, and we found out that she is also a little weeblet. She's a little weeblet. She's she's a, a weeb in the making, you know. She likes she likes amine. She uh she 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 likes a lot of uh, seemingly likes at least some of the stuff that uh, Takumi does, uh, which Takumi got really excited about, and eventually she asked if we would go with her to get one of the figures that we have for herself, and we said yes, apparently reluctantly, according to uh, Takumi, but, uh, and, 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 and then we ended the last episode with him saying that he basically wants to stand her up and not go. Um, but uh, I don't know if he deserves, honestly, Yua. Yua's very wholesome, and I don't want him to corrupt her. But you know what? As much as I'm being irked by Takumi, I, I want to see him succeed. So I think we got to go on that date. I think we got to we gotta try to liven this boy up. We got to try to get him out of his own head. So that maybe he becomes an actual human being. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, we're just not going to touch the green button. That's what I pretty much resolved to. So uh, with that, let's get into this episode, shall we? Oh. Looks like we're out of time. As I'm sure you all know, we have a test coming up soon. So make sure you take good notes, you hear me? Anyway, that's all for today. Rise! Bow. The math teacher. Wait, what was his name again? Well, whatever. The teacher left the classroom, and that was the end of classes for the day. Some students started chatting about where they'd go after school. Those who were in clubs gathered with their fellow members and headed for their club rooms. And the rest were just getting ready to go home ASAP. I was in the last camp. <clears throat> I was in the last camp. As soon as the bell rang, I was always the first to pack up and leave. But today, I stayed glued to my seat, trying to avoid eye contact with any of my classmates. My anxiety was killing me. After all, my date with Yua was very soon. Yeah, all right, all right. He's looking He's looking forward to it. He's trying to act all like, I'm going to stand her up because she's freaking 3D. But he's really excited. He's excited. He's excited. We got to help him. I think we got to help him. He doesn't currently deserve it, but you know what? 
everyone deserves a second chance, right? Everyone deserves a second chance. So we're gonna we're gonna help this boy. We're gonna get this. this we're we're gonna do what I initially said. We're gonna get this boy a girlfriend. Any normal non-video obsessed person would have been losing their mind to have a date with a girl planned. But this was me we were talking about, and I couldn't feel any more depressed. I couldn't relax at all. I was feeling physically sick. This would be the first time I'd ever gone on a date with a girl, so I had no clue what to do. Besides, would Yua even show up? Maybe she'd just been screwing with me yesterday, and she planned on standing me up. She was probably watching from the shadows right now, giggling at how gullible I was. Well, now that I thought about it, that honestly might be better than her actually showing up. Wait, did I really have to just sit around waiting? I mean, I could just blow her off and go home. Okay, maybe he doesn't care. I keep trying. Let me. Oh, let me care about you. Oh my gosh, I get it, okay. He's like, it's probably one of those things he's mistaking the, the butterflies in his stomach for physical sickness. He doesn't want to be around her because he doesn't want to get rejected. So he's already thinking all these bad things. I get it, but ah, <laughs> just let it happen. Take the chance. You know, if you already are thinking this, just let it happen. And if you get blown off, you didn't lose nothing, right? You didn't lose nothing. You just go home and play your freaking ESO video game. I like, let it happen. Be happy for once. <laughs> Alright, it's settled. Time to head home. We were in different grades anyway, so if I just cancelled our date at the last minute, I'd never have to see her again for the rest of my life. Fully determined to follow through with that plan, I stood up. She's gonna be right there. Oh no! <laughs> Miss me! <laughs> Yo, Taku! You still here? Out of nowhere, my back fell victim to a hard slap. I knew who was behind me without even looking. The only guy in class who ever talked to me. None other than Misumi-kun. You planning on heading home? You usually vanish before the bells even finished ringing. <laughs> in my head, I call it Takumi Supersonic Split. <laughs> what is he, like a Chinibio somewhere secretly deep down? <laughs> uh, I'm about to leave. You waiting on someone? <laughs> He's gonna make him go! He's gonna make him go! Yes! Alright, miss me for the win, dude! Yes, let's go! We got our wingman, dude! He's gonna- he's gonna make us go! He's gonna drag us to her, dude! Come on, miss me! Help my boy here! Help him out! Help him not be such a shut-in! Huh? How the heck did he know? No way! Was I right on the money? Uh, oh... Well, you're acting pretty darn fidgety. You've also looked over at the door about a hundred times. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> Either way, I probably shouldn't say anything that'd make me stand out too much. Don't you forget, Takami. You've gotta be invisible at this school. You've gotta blend in. Be like air. No, I'm not really... waiting for anyone. Oh, really? Then what have you been up to all this time? <laughs> well... Crap! Miss Mikun wasn't a bad guy, but at times like these, he could get really freaking annoying. Take a hint for Pete's sake. Nishijo-kun? Shivers ran down my spine. <laughs> yes! Yes! He stalled him long enough! My boy! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, man. Yes! We're gonna- we're gonna fix him. We're gonna fix him, alright? Miss me, you gotta- you gotta keep being his wingman, my guy. Yes! I slowly turned my head toward the voice. Yule was standing by the classroom door, looking apologetic. Oh, 
Gosh darn it. Because of Miss Mikun, I'd lost my chance to escape. <laughs> now he knows! Now he knows! <laughs> He's never gonna let it go! Huh? Who? What's going on? What the heck's going on? <laughs> Miss Mikun looked unusually shocked. In fact, he was literally shaking. He put his arm around my shoulder and gave me a stern look. Dude. Taku. What the heck? Explain. <laughs> that your girlfriend? N no, she's not. How many times have I told you, Miss Mikun? I'm not into 3D. <laughs> then who is she? And I'm not buying any bullcrap, like, she's my sister or something. What the heck did a shut-in like you do to meet a butte like that? <laughs> she, she followed me around yesterday. Oh, so it's like that then. She picked you up? Dang, bro, lucky guy. He put his hand on his chin, pondering for a moment, and then he finally let me go. I see, I see. Well, different strokes for different folks, huh? Gotta be someone out there that's into whatever you've got. But I'll tell you what, Taku. I'm kinda relieved you've got at least a half-normal sex life. <laughs> uh, no! Not Yua, he was kinda wholesome, okay? She's like the closest thing to wholesome I have right now, don't talk that way. S sex life? I, I told you, it's not like that. <laughs> right, whatever you say. Good luck out there, Taku. Miss Mikun wasn't taking me seriously at all. He just got all excited over his own assumptions, then slapped my back even harder than before. Ugh. At this point, he was just screwing with me. Chill out, dude. I won't steal your girl. <laughs> I I'm trying to tell you, it's not like that. <laughs> Whatever, man. Just get going. Your girl's waiting. Miss Mikun ordered me to move, so I stumbled over to Yua. Despite my best efforts, I hadn't been able to escape. Yes. Um... I came to pick you up. Am I disturbing you? Uh, no, not really. Yes. Yes, you freaking are. <laughs> I turned to look at Miss Mikun, but he just grinned and gave me the finger. <laughs> Miss Me could okay, Miss Me's kinda of the person that the that, that Takumi kinda of needs. He needs someone to just kinda of give him a shove and say screw off, you know? He's he really needs that. Uh it's kinda of funny. Honestly, I couldn't tell whether he was trying to pick a fight or cheer me on. I couldn't deal with his crap any longer, so I decided to just hurry up and leave with Yua. Yes! All right, let's go. Again, I'm really sorry. We only just met yesterday, so asking you to come with me for something like this isn't really... It's fine. Uh. <laughs> I, I was so nervous. I was leaving school together with a 3D girl. Was I a normie now, or what? <laughs> I'd always felt like this was all in a completely different world from mine. I never would have thought I'd get to experience something like this. But now I was feeling the intense pressure of Yua's silence. We were just walking side by side, not even talking. So why was this so stressful? Because you're not talking. That's... It, the, the silence is stressful. You gotta, you gotta like... 
That's the thing. See, that's my thing, okay? I've had this situation a couple of times in my life. You have to, you just keep talking. You don't, you, if you, if you don't, if you, if you keep it silent, things get awkward. But if you can figure out something to say, and you just talk about nothing, it's, it, most of the time it works out. It, you, you calm down, you know? He's got it. You got to talk, my man. And to top it all off, I didn't really know who Yua was or what her goal was. Just what did she want from an otaku freak like me? Aw. So, did you watch? Huh? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> she started talking to me out of nowhere, so I got surprised. And that weird sound I'd made just came out. You also seemed really nervous. Her expression was so tense. She was older than me. So how was she still so innocent? How surprisingly moe. <laughs> then again, I probably wasn't the best person to be talking about innocence, since I could hardly manage more than a quick sidelong glance at her. I was too embarrassed to take a proper look at her face. I just couldn't do it. You watched the new Blood Tuna episode, right? The one that aired the day before yesterday? Uh, y yeah. There was this one part that I didn't quite understand. Susumakun always rushes to rescue Seda-chan, right? But this time, how did he even know that Seda-chan was in danger? I don't quite get it. Th that um was foreshadowed in last week's episode. There was that tiny scene where Seda's phone rang for a moment, right? Susumu's name was on the caller ID. Oh! Oh! Now that you mention it, I think I remember that. Yamataku loves putting that sort of foreshadowing in. There were similar things in Gold Goal, too. Yamataku? Gold Goal? Y Yamataku is the nickname of the Blood Tune director. And he did an anime called Gold Goal before Blood Tune. Oh, really? So Yamataku-san is a famous director? Well, I like him, at least. As for why, well... No. Oh, yeah! Alright, he's, he's got another- he's got a little nerd friend. Come on, man. Come on, man, you gotta break out of your shell. You gotta have at least one nerd friend, man. I had been lecturing Yua about the various facets of anime when I realized we were already in front of Animate. Time flew by way faster than I'd expected. I'd let myself get carried away and talked way too much. Well, it didn't help that Yua was such a good listener. She paid such close attention while I shared my wisdom. I couldn't help but want to tell her everything I knew, even though I knew I was falling right into her trap. <laughs> All this, and yet I wasn't even good at talking. This was the first time I'd ever felt this way. I was talking out loud, but it felt like I was chatting online. It was a strange feeling. Oh dear, I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> um, please don't leave without me, okay? Sh sure. <laughs> Yua only got more and more nervous as she went up and spoke to the store employee. It was clear that she was out of her comfort zone, but all I could do was just stand there and watch as she placed the pre-order for the post-awakening version Seda figure. There weren't any opportunities to escape. Yua kept anxiously glancing back at me, so I couldn't budge an inch. Dude, come on, man! He, okay, 
I bet he wants to stay there because he really wants to. But in his mind, he's saying, no, I, I got to get out of here. He wants to be here. Come on, man. Right after that, she even forced me to look around the store with her. <laughs> Yua was looking all around with a big grin on her face, saying things like, Wow, there's not enough money in the world to buy all these figures. But even in the face of all that enthusiasm, I just couldn't find it in me to smile back at her. Aww. McDonald's hamburgers! <laughs> McDonald! <laughs> McDonald! Ba da ba bur ba! <laughs> oh! Love it. Okay. So, apparently, Yua took the train to school, which meant I had to accompany her all the way to Shinsen Station. She might not look it, but she was a devious one, alright. She always managed to get her way, all without making herself look even remotely selfish. <laughs> Clever girl. Talk about a wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> so, Nishijo-kun, do you have a cell phone? Once we'd reached the station, Yua suddenly asked me that question. A cell phone? I shook my head weakly. So, you don't have one. I see. I guess we can't stay in touch then. Oh, dude! Dude! How I- Oh my gosh, she's throwing it away! Bro, if he walks away, dude, she is literally like falling into his hands, bro. This never happens! <laughs> ah! And he's not even grateful. <laughs> What? Why the heck would she want to stay in touch? What, was she going to demand that I texted her about every little thing for the rest of my life? Oh, but you have a computer, don't you? I have one too, so maybe we could exchange email addresses? W why would we? No! Huh? Um... Dude! You're blowing it! Don't blow it, dude! Come on! Come on! Y you know, because when the figure goes on sale, I have to come pick up my pre-order. So, maybe we could go together again? <laughs> come on, man! I still don't have the courage to go to anime all by myself. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> Besides, um... She was way too good. <laughs> you see, Nishijo-kun... I knew she had her claws in me. But I just couldn't turn her down. If I did, I'd look like the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, you would. I really, really... 3D was the scariest freaking thing in the world. <laughs> would like to get to know you better myself. <laughs> Dude, her face again is its kind of creepy, but... <laughs> but it, but it's kind of, it's kind of cute. It's grown on me. Ah. <laughs> How was she doing this? Was it just because I was bad at talking to people, or was she just too good? Either way, you seemed intent on not leaving until she had my email. Yet at the same time, I could sense a bit of unease behind those glasses of hers. Dude, please. I'm trying to, like, think ahead what she could be. This is too easy. If she's a yandere, dude, I'm gonna cry because I want... This is, like, this is the perfect matchup, dude. Come on, man. I could practically feel my will to resist draining from my body. There were goosebumps all over my body 
Shivers ran down my spine. But I couldn't run away. And I couldn't turn her down. There was definitely something up with Yua. This aura she had. It wasn't normal. I couldn't really put into words exactly what it was that bothered me so much. But whatever it was, something wasn't right. Before I knew it, I'd torn out a scrap of notebook paper, written down my email address, and handed it to her. Yes! She took it, looking happy as can be, then quickly bowed her head and disappeared into the station. It felt like my soul had left my body. I just stood there, completely dumbfounded. Even after ten minutes passed, I couldn't move an inch. Ah, dude! All right, let's go, baby. I mean, she's gonna she's gonna message us. I'm ready. Oh wait, do I have to? Yeah, okay. So, what do you make of all this? Of her? He did not go to Grim. <laughs> bro, bro, no. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> because personally, I don't have the slightest clue. There is no way she doesn't have ulterior motives or something. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. Aw. Hey, you listening, Grim? What Iroge is this? <laughs> that night, I decided to consult Grimm about Yua. I figured I might as well. If I just kept my paranoia to myself, I wouldn't get anywhere. And that was the response I'd gotten. Well, not like I could blame him. The first time I'd spoken with Yua, I reacted the same way. <laughs> was stupid of me to think you'd be any help, Grim. Now wait one freaking second! You were being serious? You actually managed to raise a flag with someone? <laughs> you really have a way of getting whatever you want, huh? Whoa. Now, who said they weren't into 3D again? LMFAO. <laughs> it's not like that, dude. Grimm's reaction was almost identical to Miss Mikun's. Were they the same person or something? <laughs> well, for a turbo virgin like you, Nidhart, now that you have a girl, it should be easy to leave Otakudom behind and lose your V-card. You gotta be careful, though. Like, if you start talking to her about your school swimsuit fetish, she'll dump you. So use common sense. <laughs> Actually, I prefer competition swimsuits over regular school ones. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about, dude, Lamau. <laughs> you've got mail, you big dum-dum. Oh? Out of nowhere, I heard Seraton's voice. It's even in his computer. She's even his you've got mail voice. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh. That was my custom email notification sound. I casually went to check my email, and the sender's name was... Kusnoki Yua. Wow. She sent one already? <laughs> I got an email. Just now. What? There it is! <laughs> oh, that's good. This... This was the first time I'd ever gotten an email from a 3D girl. I gulped and clicked to open it. Oh. Uh, let's see. I don't know if it'll say, but I'll read it now. Good evening. This is Kusnoki. I sent this email as soon as I was able to. I would appreciate it if you added me to your address book. Dude, 
My apologies for making you accompany me today. <laughs> Sorry. Even so, I still had a lot of fun. Perhaps because it was my first time going to a store like that. Or maybe it was because Nishijo-kun was with me. Lol. Oh! What time will you be coming into school tomorrow, Nishijo-kun? Oh, I'm only asking because... I was hoping I'd be able to say hello tomorrow morning. That's all. It would be nice if we could run into each other again tomorrow. Well, uh, I can't read what that says. Something be sure to email you again soon. Oh, I'll, I'll be sure to e email you again soon. Good night. Dude, bro, you got this hook, line, and sinker. You didn't even do anything for it, bro. <laughs> Dude, that does make it seem sketch though, right? Because we know there's some crazy crap going on with the new gen stuff and the, the whatever. I just wonder if there's something sketch with her, right? Because like, like, what if this, what if this is like, uh, 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 it's not the same thing, obviously, but what if this is like a Moika situation? You know what I mean? Seems all nice and innocent. She's even got the glasses. All right. Just saying. Uh, but, but seems all nice and innocent sliding into our DMs like that. But, uh, but she's actually part of something, something crazy, you know, something maybe not good or something, you know? I don't know. I, I don't want to just, like, hook, line, and sinker this. But, dude, look at this email. Like, what the crap? And he's going to be like, this sucks. I can't believe this is happening to me. <laughs> it's freaking... <laughs> it's going to make me mad. <laughs> you was usual elegance and purity shown through the email. And by using a lot of emoticons, she gave it a bit of a friendly tone, too. But when she said things like, maybe it was because Nishijo-kun was with me, or I was hoping I'd be able to say hello tomorrow morning, I just couldn't help but feel like she was up to something. Aww. Post it now! <laughs> It's tame. Chill the frick out. Just usual- Wait! I couldn't read that. Just usual greetings and crap, I think he said. Oh, wait. Hello? Oh, what the frick? Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay. Whatever, bro. Just post it. Post it already. Uh, good evening. This is XXX. Uh, I sent this email- Oh, okay. He just sent the whole email. I got you. I got you. He must have to send it in bits. Okay. Got you. <laughs> okay. Grim wouldn't stop pestering me, so I just gave up and posted the entire email. Though, I did censor my and you as personal information, at least. Oh, -ho -ho! would you look at that lovey-dovey email. Kill yourself, Nidhart, you normie scum. <laughs> Please take this seriously. This must be some kind of trap. Yeah, yeah, how tight that tinfoil hat you got on! You sure you're not overthinking it? It just looks like you raised a flag with this chick to me. You're almost at the good end already. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, right? It, it, it seems a little too easy, right? That's, that don't happen. That don't happen. I'm telling you right now, that don't happen. People don't act like that. There's something. I, I have a feeling there is something going on, but I want to believe. I want to believe in the dream, baby. We're going to believe in the dream until I cry when it ends up not being true. So here we go. That's what I mean. There's no way this is real. You think this could happen to an otaku freak like me? There's no way. You think a cute girl would try to pick me up IRL? Dude, lol. Are you seriously complimenting your girlfriend already? <laughs> Could you quit trolling for one second? Come on, I already told you. You're just overthinking it. We're two of a kind, aren't we, Nidhart? We both know good girls like that don't exist anymore. Yeah, I was fully aware. But she really was just that nice. And that's exactly what didn't feel right to me. See, and it's the thing that she picked him out, right? She said she was stalking him. Why was she stalking him? Like, what about him made her want to start stalking him? How did she know? 
Did she know he was into this type of stuff? Did she hear him, like, muttering to himself about Saraton? Or did she see... Oh, she could have seen him go into Animite. Or, uh, an Animate, excuse me. I'm still trying to figure out how to say that properly. Uh, or, or one of the other places I can't remember the names of, right? She could have seen him go in there and thought, I need to have that kind of courage. But, you know, always saw that he was alone. And then when she was going to school at one point, she passed him and thought, oh, he goes to the same school. I have to follow him and see how he does it. And then got caught. And then then this happened, right? I have to keep the dream alive. I'm keeping it alive, dude. I'm keeping it alive. Well, maybe her stalking crap went a bit too far, but that's kind of hot, don't you think? Well, it means she really, really likes you. And you said she likes anime, too? Yeah, no way such a perfect girlfriend exists, bro. Not for us otaku, anyway, well, Mao. Just don't go ruining her with your degenerate crap. <laughs> dude, I just had a conspiracy theory. <laughs> dude, I just had, I had the biggest conspiracy theory, bro. There's probably no way. It's probably going to be someone in this story. But what if, bro, what if Grim is Daru, dude? What if? Well, I'm just throwing it out there. That's a long shot because this was made before Steins Gate existed. But what if? Like, what if they don't ever say who Grim is? What if that's the case? I have a feeling it's someone in this game. And I have a feeling it's a girl. But it just hit me. What if it's actually Daru? <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of wacky. Anyway, that's that's probably not the case, but just hit me. I thought I'd share. <laughs> well, th that might not be so bad. No, scratch that. That was exactly what I wanted. Still, cheer up a bit. She made the first move, bro. I'm not into 3D. You say that, but we both know you really want to go out with her. Am I right? If you want to de-otakufy yourself, now's your chance, lol. You won't get a second one, and you know it. You're right, but... Congrats! You're popular now! Won't last long, so don't let it go to waste. Just keep calm and go on the attack. Just be Nidhart IRL. You can do it. You got the green light, bro! If I could just do it, I wouldn't be going through so much turmoil. Like, I realized something when I was talking with Yua the other day. Sure, there were a couple of moments where I had fun or felt happy, but aside from that, I just felt annoyed and completely exhausted. Well, that's because you're an introvert, right? You, eventually, your battery runs down, dude. You just don't know it because you've always had it at full charge. You know, and, and, uh, except for when you had to go to school. But I'm just saying, you you pretty much always maintain it at full charge, okay? You know, to be like a social introvert, you have to allow your battery to deplete. And then you let it come back up again. You know, it's good for a battery to do that, to charge and, and deplete and charge and deplete. It makes the battery stronger, all right? If that was what I had to go through with every IRL interaction, then I'd honestly rather just live in the 2D world where I could do whatever I wanted. And that was why I decided not to reply to Yua's email. No! You gotta give me the you gotta give me the ability to do so, dude. I freaking wanna reply. Why did you They took it out of my hand. They took it out of my hand. They took it out of my hand. I'm mad. I'm mad. What What's this? A fire burned bright into the sky. Is this Fess again? Scorching red cinders danced around the incinerator. The flame was fueled by a sailor-style uniform, along with countless textbooks. Uh, okay. What? Oh, what the heck? Oh, that's a new person. On a foothill overlooking the Seto Inland Sea, a girl stood in her home's garden. The steam whistles of boats echoed in the distance, and the nearby trees gently swayed in the refreshing sea breeze. In the midst of such a serene scene, the girl, Orihara Kozue, stood still and alone in front of the incinerator, bathing in the somber ambience of its cinders. The girl's gaze was locked onto the school uniform and textbooks as they were slowly reduced to ashes, each becoming clad in a crimson glimmer. 
until only yesterday. They had been her school uniform and her textbooks. Despite having lit the fire herself, the girl did not move from the spot, perhaps out of a lingering sense of regret. That, too, lasted only a moment. She suddenly knitted her eyebrows and covered her ears as hard as she could. She gasped in agony, and yet she did nothing more. The girl did not moan, nor did she raise any tearful complaints. All she let out was a series of ragged breaths. She shook her head repeatedly from side to side, as if to express a fierce visceral objection. And as she did, her strength slowly started to crumble and she collapsed to the ground. She fell on her backside with a thud, let her jaw droop as if utterly exhausted, and looked up to the sky with a dazed expression on her face. Minutes later, she was still in that exact same position, not having moved a single muscle. Until suddenly, she turned around with conviction, as if she had heard someone call out to her, She looked toward the house's porch. The wooden house had been built over 50 years ago, so despite it being daytime, it appeared quite dim. Anything beyond the porch could barely be seen. Kozue slowly stood back up and walked over to the porch. And at that very moment, her mother appeared with impeccable timing. Oh, there you are, Kozue-chan. I've been looking all over for you. Have you finished packing yet? Kozue promptly nodded and slowly sat down. We'll have time to say goodbye to our little old place in a couple of days. Her mother took a seat next to her, gazing toward the inland sea with a gentle look in her eye. This will be your first time in Tokyo, won't it, Kozue-chan? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll make lots and lots of friends. <laughs> Despite her mother's caring words, Kozue did not nod, nor even shake her head in response. She simply remained silent, gazing wistfully toward the still-burning incinerator in the corner of the garden. Huh. Okay, we're getting insight to these other characters now. That's interesting. So last time it was Fess. This time it was Kozue. Interesting, okay. I wonder how many more characters there are. I think it showed in the front, like in the in the opening, I think there's five of them all together, including Yua. And we've seen... Well, wait, I think the sister counts as one too, I thought. I think I saw her in there. So that would mean we're missing one. Okay. Another week came. And with it, another school day. As usual, I headed to school with my head hung low, depressed as ever. Autumn was starting to come into full swing. The leaves of the trees in Shoto Park were slowly changing color, and I was starting to feel chilly in my short sleeve uniform. I supposed it made sense that I'd be surprised by the change of season, given I rarely went outside in the first place. I still hadn't really registered that summer had ended. My weekend had consisted of non-stop ESO. Grimm had kept on bugging me about Yua, but I'd just ignored him. I hadn't gotten an email from Yua since that first one. I hadn't replied to her first one either. So maybe she'd finally given up on me. Dude! I really hoped that was the case. Whenever I talked to Yua, my feelings always got all jumbled up. Those interactions almost made me have a little hope. Aww. Dude, it's the butterflies, dude. It's the butterflies in your stomach, bro. But there was no point in being so optimistic. At the end of the day, I was just an otaku freak. My whole life, I'd never, ever 
had any success with 3D, so I'd have just given up on it. Please don't give me any hope. Please don't have any hope for me. Just as I thought that, someone tapped my shoulder from behind. I figured it was Nanami or Miss Mikun, but when I turned around, I was shocked. Yes, yes! Nishijo-kun! <sighs> Yua was looking at me with a smile on her face. Her cheeks were a little flushed. Why was she so out of breath? I was right behind you, and I thought, Oh, is that Nishijo-kun? So I ran to catch up. <laughs> Had she really not given up yet? Did she still have some hope left in me? Good morning, Nishijo-kun. Uh, y yeah. Phew, I finally got a chance to say it. It only took me four days, if you count the weekend, that is. Oh, right. I emailed you last week. D did you read it? Oh. <laughs> I found myself nodding out of reflex. Oh, good. I didn't see any replies in my inbox, so I was worried that maybe it didn't send properly. I considered sending it again. But I guess I was right to be patient. Seriously, what the heck did Yua want from me? Did she expect me to like her back? Did she want me to be her boyfriend? And then, did she want us to live out some intimate lovey-dovey fantasy together? There was no way I could do that. No way I could be that normal. No matter how hard I tried. I really wanted to. But it just wasn't possible. Aww, he really wants to, dude. Aww. I still didn't understand why Yua even liked me in the first place, which made it all the more impossible to trust her. So I just couldn't do it. Um, Nishijokun, are you all right? Huh? Well, um. You've just kind of been standing there for a while now. <laughs> Upon realizing that, I quickly started to walk away, leaving Yua behind. No! But before I could get very far, Yua had already caught up with me. Dude, she is persistent. If she isn't evil somehow, if she isn't bad in some way, you know, like actually trying to get to him for some reason, Dude, this is the most persistent girl. Like, whoa, dude. This this is like... This dude, he's he's got like... Like, God is looking out for this boy right now. <laughs> he's trying to give him a chance in life, dude. I went over to your classroom yesterday. But you weren't there, right? So I thought that maybe you'd caught a cold. And taken the day off. I was very worried. Oh. But you seem to be doing just fine. So that's good. S sometimes Sorry. I just don't come to school sometimes. E everyone calls me shut in. Did that break the spell? You're totally disillusioned now that you know the truth, right? If so, I didn't mind. I'd never gotten my hopes up anyway. Go ahead and call me an otaku freak. And then after that, never talk to me again. Oh, really? I see. Well, I'm glad I got to see you today then. What? I was left speechless. All I could manage to do was stare at Yua's smile. 
but when our eyes met, I got flustered and looked down. How was she not disgusted by me? And, if you ask me, even if you don't always show up, I don't think that makes you a shut-in. Oh, Dude, I feel like she's like, whatever we're a part of here, it almost feels like someone created the perfect girl for her, doesn't it? It kind of feels like someone created the perfect girl and then said, All right, your mission is, you know, and then sent the, sent her in to try and and say, like, like to completely dissuade us, you know? To be like, oh, maybe I can open up to her and then, and then something will happen. It kind of does feel that way, I'm not gonna lie. It kind of does feel that way, I don't know why. It's like, because I'm expecting something, right? It's too easy. Too perfect, she's too persistent. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. I don't know. But it's really cute in the meanwhile. <laughs> oh, I I'm really sorry. I shouldn't talk like I fully understand your situation. I just... B but... Going to school... Kills me. And that's exactly why I respect you a lot. Oh? Uh? Huh? I never thought I'd ever hear someone say that to me. What the heck was respectable about a total loser like me? A gentle smile had spread over Yua's face. A smile so sweet it could cure any disease. That was genuinely what I thought in that moment. After all, even though it's so hard for you, you still make the effort to come sometimes. Most people wouldn't choose to do things that cause them pain. B but I'm an otaku, a f freak. Oh, he laid it, he laid all the cards out on the table. Here it comes. But I like listening to you talk, Nishijokun. Uh, what in the? What the heck? What was with all this validation? Why did hearing it make me feel so good about myself? It, it, it felt like Yua was embracing me. All the way down to my core. Like she was giving me the right to be here. To exist in this moment. It felt like... When I was with her. Maybe... I could even be a normal person again. Oh, yes! Yes! Please don't be fake, dude! Please don't be a fake girl, dude! Please! Please don't be fake! Don't be using him, dude! Please! Please! I want this! He can change, dude! Look at him! He can be normal! He can be a good guy! Normal sucks, dude. Nobody should be normal. But you shouldn't be weird like he's been, right? You gotta be- you can be- you can- okay. Uh, not w weird's the wrong word. Don't be uh, perverted like he is, but you can be weird. Everyone should be weird. Everyone should have their little quirks and whatever and stuff, right? You know, a normal person's a boring person, right? So that's not what I mean. But like, he's, he's he might try to be better, dude. Please don't be fake. Please. Oh. Uh, oh no. The bell. I hadn't realized until now, but almost all the students were already gone. Everyone had made their way into the school building. All right then, I'll be sure to talk to you later, Nishijokun. Oh, I almost forgot. Would you happen to have any time today after school? Huh? Um, m maybe. We could walk home together, it, if you want, I mean. With a timid tone, Yua mumbled her words, a faint blush on her cheeks. Come on, dude, take the bait. I don't even care if it's bait, dude, take it. Uh, I'll wait for you in the courtyard after classes end. So, if you want to come meet me there, please. Ah. Uh, but don't feel like you have to. It, it's perfectly fine if you don't come. I'll talk to you later. If you want, I mean. Oh. 
Yua bowed elegantly, then darted off toward the third-year classrooms. Dude, it's too easy, but it's so wholesome. I love it. I love it. Please be real. Please. <laughs> Please be real. I watched her disappear into the building. Then I pinched my cheek. It really wasn't a dream. Or a delusion. No!